This is Mari Robeson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. If you are enjoying these episodes, I would so deeply appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends, especially your friends, anybody who's interested in pursuing a career in the arts or just wants to support the arts. There is so much valuable information in all of these episodes. Each one of these artists and entrepreneurs are really sharing how they are doing it. And I learned something on every single episode. I really wish something like this existed when I was just starting out. So it's really helpful stuff and I would really appreciate it if you would help me spread the word. That's it. This is episode number 17, and today I have a really good show for you. I have abstract artist Jennifer Flanagan on the show. I just adore her. I have followed her for quite some time. She's such a sweet soul, and you know, abstract contemporary art is so out of my comfort zone that I was really excited to kind of dive into her process of how she creates her art. And it was so interesting and, and kind of funny too. And it was really um, helpful information to, to hear how she is creating her work. Also, she is so lovely and, and generous to share a very personal story. And um, it's very touching. And I think it will really inspire many people. So it was the jumping off point in her life when she decided to take that ultimate leap of faith and pursue being an artist as a full-time business. And she's, she's doing it really well. You know, she's, she's super refreshing. She's very grounded. She's, she's been on HGTV. She's been featured in all kinds of, you know, traditional homes, lots of different ways, but she's really all about the process, not the next big thing. And just really, you're going to enjoy this. This is this is a good one. So stay tuned for a fun episode with a very talented Jennifer Flanagan. Hi, Jennifer. It's so great to have you on the podcast. I've followed you for a long time, and I just know this is going to be a super interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mari. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm fascinated by artists like you because I am the opposite. It's so far out of my wheelhouse to be a contemporary artist, an abstract artist. So I'm really excited to kind of dive into your process and how you create and why you create. And yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. Um, So you are from, and I I hope I don't say this wrong because I'm out in California. (laughs) But you're from Raleigh. Raleigh? Yes. Yep. Raleigh, Raleigh, Carolina. North mm-hmm. Carolina. Now, are you, have you always been from there? Is... I have. Yes. I've been, I've was born in um, Tampa, Florida, but I've lived here my entire life. So it born... seems like such a great place. Cause it's, you know, the design hub. So. It is. It's really grown a lot. It's crazy. The, the changes living here my whole life to see how small it was. And now it's so much larger and there's just so much more to do and the people here are just so so many people moving here it's a wonderful place to live yeah it, it seems like it um okay so let's go back to the beginning so you are this amazing artist did you always want to pursue art like back let's go back to high school Is that oh yeah <laughs> Um, you know, I, I always loved art. I, I never saw myself as artistic at all, really. Um, my grandmother was a huge influencer in, in my life, and she is um, my yaya. So we're Greek, <laughs> and um, oh. yeah, she um, she introduced me to a lot of abstract art and Jackson Pollock and um, Salvador Dali and all kinds of artists. And it just really was just really fascinating to me. Um, I was into music and singing and stuff in high school, but I never, I could not draw. <laughs> so I never really saw myself as being very artistic. And, um, but that she definitely opened my eyes to being interested in all kinds of different art. So that mm. was definitely the beginning. So after high school, did you go to college or did you do some sort of trade? What were, what was um, that? Yeah, I really struggled in school. Um, I, I have, definitely have ADD and didn't realize that that was quite 
a bigger issue. I just thought that I was, you know, bad in school and couldn't pay attention. And um, so school was never my strong suit. And um, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know exactly uh, what to do. I, I didn't really like have like a specific plan. Um, and I ended up going to college for a little while and that wasn't working so great. <laughs> and so um, I had met a friend of my parents who was a very um, talented hairstylist and she really encouraged me to go to school um, to do that. Hmm. And so I became a hairstylist, went to school for that and um, did that for about 10 years and really enjoyed it. And that was what I did straight out of school. Um, and that kind of started my artistic journey, I think, because that really kind of helped me change my own mind, I guess, um, that I w had artistic talent because <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't really see myself in that way. Isn't, I, isn't that a shame? I mean, I feel like school is just really not for everybody. It's some, some people's brains are just wired on the other side. And those are the sides, the, the creative side, sometimes that don't get taught. And, right. and then you feel unsuccessful. And that's, that's just a shame because really your wheelhouse was over in this creative world over there. But right. So, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I think that there's, in school, there's just not that many options. You know, I feel like it's like you're supposed to go to college right after, you know, and, and that's just, or that's how it was then. I, you know, there wasn't as many, I feel like, uh, options that you were given. And, you know, it was just, that was like the route you go. So if you, you just kind of set up where if you're not good at that, you, it really damages your self-esteem. Yeah. And yeah. you kind of feel like you don't know what else to do or what your options really are. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. And, and, you know, some people just math is not their thing or, you know, it's, it's more of the arts and I wish there was more of it in the schools and people could see all the different variations of art as well. But, but you found it, you figured it out. So you want to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of used it too. I kind of, you know, I figured out, you know, that having that attention problems kind of, you know, like as, as I work as an artist that really like I've made that work for me, oh, I, I you know, that. like I work, you know, almost always five, six paintings at once. Um, that helps me create my best work. And, um, you know, I usually work standing up cause I can't sit still. <laughs> so I feel like that adds like an energy to my work as well. So I've kind of like over the years figured out how to make something that used to be like you know, an issue or a problem kind of worked in my favor. I love that. That <laughs> is really inspiring. That is so interesting. So after, so when you were doing hair for those 10 years, were you also doing artwork? Yes. Yes, I was. And I, um, the lady who I apprenticed for, um, she's really amazing. Her name is Tracy Farmer and she's a hairstylist, but she went to art school first. And um, I admired her having this amazing hobby um that she she very realistic art which is so different than mine which i admire so much because i feel like that's not my <laughs> not what i'm good at so um she really um encouraged me not only my hairdressing career but also just kind of helped like open that door of you know i've got this one artistic side of me and maybe that means there's another one and that was just interesting to me to like it just made myself like see myself in a different way. Oh, that's so good. It's, it's wonderful that you can have these mentors too along the way and in just different places, you know, especially yeah, where absolutely. you're working. That's, that's great. So then what? So 10 years you did it, then, then what happened? Well, I mean, it really was just an outlet. It was like, you know, I've got this hobby and it's fun. And, you know, I just found myself always wanting to paint. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. sure you can relate to that. Um, oh, I yeah. Just got, <laughs> it almost became like a, like a compulsion in a good way. You know, I just, it was my happy place. And I just, I love doing it. And it, it was so fulfilling to me. Uh -huh. um, and through doing that, I you know, I, I kind of dabbled and, you know, I, I had like a client base from doing hair and, you know, I'd show my close clients, you know, they're, they'd ask me, they knew I painted and, you know, it just it kind of one thing like led to another, as far as that goes, where people were interested and said, Oh, I, I love that. I put that in my house. Or like, would you do a painting for me? You know? And I was just kind of blown away by that response. <laughs> I was like, 
what you know you you okay really <laughs> and I was really surprised and that really encouraged me um and so I, I did both for a long time mm-hmm. and I basically um I mean having a full-time job you know I would funnel that money that I would make a lot of times then and put it back into my art business to pay for my supplies and everything um mm-hmm. and so it, eventually it just became down to um a choice in a lot of ways you know you've only got so much time there's only so much of yourself you have to give and um eventually came down to a choice of you know oh I, i'm people are you know buying my art and this this could be a career mm-hmm. i i feel like that wasn't an, much of an option you know like growing up like when i was younger there was not being an artist i felt like or i didn't see it <laughs> you know, now that we have instagram and you know we see these artists that are like making a living doing this Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. i mean you know you look at like ashley longshore for example Mm -hmm. i mean wow like yeah you know you see that and it's like wow that's possible and you know and she's a self-taught artist too exactly right (laughs) i do oh i love that you touch on that because i grew up the same way and i was actually Mm -hmm. funneled that way like no you have to get a technical degree and i a real job a real job (laughs) yeah and i actually fought it so much that i got a technical art degree (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, I, I love that this is the greatest time to be an artist right now because there is so many different ways that you can monetize your career. And that's what this whole podcast is about. It's like sharing all the different avenues that you could take to be creative and make a living. Yeah. So there was some point then at, that you, there were, there was a jumping off point when you said, okay, it looks like I'm, I'm making enough money doing this art um, my artwork that I can actually take the leap and I can go pursue this or was there other factors that inspired you to do that? Yeah, definitely. I, um, it was very, uh, it was very difficult to leave my career of, of, you know, that I'd built for 10 years of doing hair. Um, I I love to talk obviously. (laughs) um, (laughs) I love people and, you know, I had so many special clients and, and, and taking that leap of faith and that, that jump, you know, was a really, I wrestled with it for prob- honestly, probably almost two years. Mm-hmm. Um, I really was just kind of like, you know, can I really do a lot of self doubt working through, but then also just the safety net financially. Sure. Um, and, um, I had a recent, my brother passed away. He was younger than me. And, mm-hmm. um, that was a huge, huge thing for me. Um, because it really, you go through something like that it's Mm -hmm. you know you really just you you realize what's really important you Mm -hmm. know and you really think about you know we all say life's short but you're really faced with that Mm -hmm. and um it's kind of like you know what what do i want to do i'm I'm not happy doing this anymore i want to go for this but i'm scared and you know and that was just really a, a point for me where and actually, one of my last discussions with him before he passed, um, he was encouraging me to mm. leave my job. And yeah, it was really looking back, it's, it's, it was really like amazing. And he was, you know, it's just saying, you know, and he, you know, he, he was younger than me, you know, he didn't know anything about art, you know, but he was just seeing how much I love doing it, how happy it made me and that, you know, he was just, you got to work on marketing yourself and giving me, you know, this advice that I should take this this leap so that was a huge point for me um and that's pretty much you know shortly after when I decided to really go for it (laughs) and I haven't looked back I'm very happy I did well that's a powerful story (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's it's interesting and unfortunately you know I'm so sorry to hear that you lost your brother I mean and I lost my sister which is why I started this whole this is named after her right and yeah I mean it does kind of make you go what are we doing here and you know what's my legacy gonna be and how can I help people and can I follow my passion can I follow my dreams and really create something bigger than even just me yeah, yeah. definitely I mean, and I think that that's great that he was giving you advice on that and doing all Mm -hmm. that because uh, I'm sure he's helping you. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So you Um, like really moved into um, 
you know, you, you, you didn't just leap, like you took a gigantic leap because you've got so much press and you've done so well with everything. Oh, thank you. Do you, um, <laughs> Oh, I lost my train of thought there when I was thinking. That's okay. Oh, what were you using? I know when my sister passed, I was using my art to kind of um, process and, and it's, I use it almost as a, a healing tool for myself. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. So when you were creating those pieces of art back then, um, how long ago was that? Um, that was five years ago. Five years ago. So do you, yep. was your art, has your art evolved since that time of when you left? Um, it I'm definitely has. Yeah, it definitely has. I think that, um, a, a big part, I feel like, and I don't know if, I don't feel like no one really talks about this, but I feel like, um, definitely with my art, the big goal for so long was to quote unquote, make it, you know, to, to, to be, you know, do this full time and to get people to buy my things, you know, that, that was the big, um, motivation and um so i feel like i was doing i don't even know if it was consciously maybe maybe it was but just looking at things and be like oh what would someone buy what does someone want mm -hmm. and not really what what do i want to create mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and a lot of that was probably just fear you know <laughs> like if no one buys anything i can't do this you know mm -hmm. and so i think that my art has evolved now into what I really want to create as opposed to what I think someone will purchase or someone, someone's approval. Um, so I think I've definitely become more, you know, taking more of a risk, I guess, with that and really just trying to, you, you really have to like, nowadays I feel like, you know, um, everything's online and you consume so much and, you know, you're always seeing what everyone else is doing. And so just trying to really stay in your own lane and yeah. mm -hmm. really create what, you feel like you want to create. I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've been like a commercial artist for so long. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, you're, what you're painting is trending and, and you, you are doing it to put it on a product or a wallpaper or something like mm -hmm. that. And that's, that's my wheelhouse. But, um, like I have a current collection that's been inspired by all of these amazing artists that I've been talking to. That's just truly just for me. And it has a, a real deep meaning behind it of something that I want to, a collection that I want to create. And mm -hmm. so I totally get like, you want to just go off and do you, but then you're like, mm -hmm. well, nobody will buy it. <laughs> but right. It's, yeah. it's, it's feeding my soul right now. So I hope somebody <laughs> buys it. <laughs> I hope they get it when they see it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And I think if it really is coming from you, I think that there's, I don't know what it is, but I think people can kind of feel that, you know, I think that, you know, if you're just doing something to sell it or doing it for the wrong reasons, it's, I don't know, there's something out there that like, people can just feel if it's like just genuinely your work, you know? I absolutely believe in that. And I, I've um, also really shifted to really putting very specific intention into my painting, like really thinking about, um, and you know, what is it that I want to say with this? And right. so when you are doing, so you're in this world of this, like mine's so literal, but yours is in this abstract world. And so when you're painting something, like do you come to it and say, I'm going to paint the emotion of love and this is what it's going to feel like. And you, you just start working on it. Or what is it that you're, you're thinking about when you, when you're starting a painting? Um, it can't be, really it can be different any any time. Um, sometimes I honestly am very inspired by a lot of um, interior designers. I love their work and putting together different combinations of colors and things like that and textures is very inspiring to me. Um, you know, sometimes I honestly try to get out of my own head and not think too much. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Those are some of my best paintings, I feel like. Because um, no matter what I do with my intention of... Um, try and create a certain thing it always turns out different you know and if i'm too stuck in my head with what i was trying to create i'm not open to what it actually kind of becomes if that makes sense mm -hmm. um yeah and you know some of the my favorite you know pieces that i've done have been kind of mistakes you know that they weren't what i was going for <laughs> so i kind of just um color combinations you know that's definitely something that is very inspiring to me um and just kind of 
not overthinking too much, but I don't know if that answers your question, but no, it um, totally does. I mean, I always start a painting with an idea and an intention, but it never yeah. comes out the way that I actually thought it was going to. I mean, it does. That, <laughs> right. There's that moment where it just becomes itself and becomes its own thing. And you're just in the flow of it. And you're just yeah. like, okay, I'm along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. It's a life of its own. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. Absolutely. And I agree. Those are definitely the best, the best paintings for sure. Huh, that's, that's really interesting. Cause I feel like, um, you know, I look at your, you've been doing this in blue a lot at the, mm-hmm. it's just like one stroke. And yes. Like to me, that's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I'm like, you've like prepped this canvas, you've got money invested in it and you've got one shot <laughs> to well, get this actually, to look right. <laughs> well, what's funny about that is I actually, those, that series started as a way to shut off being such a perfectionist. I was getting so stuck in my head that it, I've gotten this like slump where painting wasn't fun and I was being so technical and so hard on myself. And, and I got, I was like, you know, this isn't why I do this. You know, this is, this is it not being enjoyable is not going to be good art. And so I started with these on paper I call it my squirrel series, but I I started them on paper to loosen myself up, to not think so much and to just go for it. And I did that as an exercise and then people started wanting to buy them. And I was, I was really surprised because I was like, this is like an exercise. They're awesome. (laughs) You know, this is funny, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Strike a nerve with somebody. I love them. I think they're gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And so I, you know, they just, they were these paper small pieces that were just like, you know, for fun and they, they turned into now that, you know, they're now, you know, huge. (laughs) So 48 by 48 and, you know, like big, big stuff. And, um, but they're, they're a lot of fun and yeah, you just kind of have to go for it with those because the if you think about Terrifying. it too much, with the blank oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> so that, always paint over it though. That's, you know, that's well, the thing. Okay, that's true. That is true. But still, I don't know. Like that's that's <laughs> so far out of my like comfort zone. I mean, maybe I should just do it because it is. But it's so just the exercise. I because I you know I come from more of a graphic design. Everything's in yes. line, like kind of, and I have tried so hard by be, trying watercolors and trying different mediums to get out of that and to become looser like that. Mm-hmm. And then I look at you, someone like you, and I'm like, no, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I feel about your work. I, I could never, ever do that. So I, I think it's absolutely beautiful and amazing, but it's, I mean, that seems terrifying to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, abstract art is really interesting. Now I, I have an art degree and a background in art and mm-hmm. I you I can see a lot of things because of that I, I mm-hmm. you, you through that education your eye gets trained and then also just years of doing it even if you don't have the education you've seen so many things and you're it's something you love you're looking at it all the time but you, you know abstract art some some of it is just great and then some of it you're like you like, no, I just don't get that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, there's just a little it factor for some reason. And I can't even put my finger on what it is, why mm-hmm. some abstract art just really hits the nerve and other just, just doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think that, you know, people, that's one question I always get from people is how do you know when your painting's done? Yeah. How, how do finished? you know? It's that same feeling like you just said, you just, see it and you just have that feeling of I like that that looks good I that it's done like it's the same thing it's just like a it's a feeling yeah yeah that's that's true so I can't believe you have like five going at the same time I mean I have a couple going at the same time but five would like stress me out sometimes it's more well I think it helps me to just like if I get too focused on it sometimes I'll ruin and paint over a good part, you know, like if I have it Mm. and I get to just look at it for, you know, a day or two and, you know, start on something else and then go back to it. I just feel like that helps me create the best work that I can. I don't know. I'm not sure if that works for other people or not, but it it definitely works for me. Um, I have, I do that. I do that too. Sometimes you just need to walk away from it. And I I feel like um, I have like paintings in like every 
every room in my house. Same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's just like, what are we doing? When can I see the kitchen table again? <laughs> oh, yes. We have that discussion at my house all the time. The, the, the canvases. But you the have a new takeover. studio. Do you have a... a yeah. You got, where, is that a separate studio away from your house? Yes, it is. I just moved into a new studio that's closer to downtown Raleigh. And um, I've been painting out of my house for... Gosh, um, four four years, and I really like. I needed a change of scenery. I mean, not only was the art taking over my house, like my poor husband, like you know, he's right, just, right. he's so sweet. You know, our, he's hus- just our like, husbands need to, to get together and have a support group. That, yeah, <laughs> they might need to do that. I'm sure he would really appreciate that. But no, but you know, I mean, you just your supplies, and, and especially if you're working large scale, you know, things just start to like kind of take over. So oh, yeah, um, and yeah, and I really needed like I wanted you know, a change of scenery. And, um, you know, I, I went from being a hairstylist, which, you know, you talk all day long and to being working from home and being by myself, you know? Okay. But like you and I, we talk to our cats all day. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got the cats. Right. So I'm like, you know, crazy cat lady talking to my cats. Exactly. I get it. I get why you got the studio away from your house. I think I need to go get a studio away from my house. Well, they're very distracting. Oh <laughs> so, my gosh. So distracting. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, it was just, it was getting, it's been really, I, I can't tell you, I mean, it's, it's new, you know, but I mean, how much more productive I'm being, you know, just, just when I'm there, I'm focused on that only, you know, and there's nothing else to distract me. And that's been, I, I feel like it's new, but I feel like that's really going to take things to the next level for me because I think that I really needed that focus and, and just a change of scenery, you know, I mean, going from, you know, working from home and living at home, it's all like Groundhog Day, you know, it's the same thing over and over. So, um, yeah. It kind of makes it feel like you have a real job. I'm going to my office now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's always what I tell my husband. I said, I'm out with the office, you know, (laughs) it makes you, yeah, it it feels, I feel like more legit, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and then you have a nice space where people like collectors can come see your work and it's not like coming into your home or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's, it just feels more professional and I feel yeah, like it's just, and, and it's, you know, it's got all my stuff is there. <laughs> it's not taking over the house. So that it's all been really wonderful so far. I'm very excited about that. That took a, a long time to, to get to that point, but it's, I'm really appreciating it. If rent wasn't so crazy in California, I would absolutely do the same thing. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm sure. I couldn't even rent a warehouse without it being more than my mortgage. <laughs> Just yeah <laughs> no I yeah I, I do feel lucky in that way that there's um that there's that for sure um yeah. anyway that's really exciting that's that's super fun I I love yeah that. so are you in any it seems like you work with a lot of interior designers is that kind of let's talk about how you marketed your work so you have yeah. a of work and like how do you go about selling your work um well um I started out, I was in some stores um, in Charleston. I have family in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, I started first selling in stores there um, because it's such an artsy town. And Mm -hmm. I just thought my stuff would do well there. Um, And, you know, I'm I'm very into Instagram and, you know, promoting things on there. Um, But that, having my stuff there is where I really started selling things and on, um, on Instagram or in the stores? Oh, I'm sorry, in the stores. Oh, okay. Um in Charleston. And then and, and on Instagram a little bit, but I had didn't have like enough of a following or whatever. Um but definitely that helped me to oddly enough connect to some interior designers that actually live locally here in Raleigh <laughs> because they would go to Charleston to, you know, buy things for their clients and stuff and see my art there. So it's kind of interesting how that worked out. Um Uh, but I mean, I definitely, you know, one thing that I've done as far as marketing is to just be really relentless. And as far as putting yourself out there, you know, there's interior designers locally that I would email just like introduce myself. Um, I think it's important to, that's a great tip. Yeah. To offer, but to offer like what you can do for them and not just like, here's my art, you know, to be like, Hey, do you need art for a photo shoot for, you know, something that you have upcoming or, you know, to really like introduce well, yourself. To your, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, no, I'm, I'm 
did interior design for many, many years. And yeah. you're always looking for art in a certain size <laughs> or something yes. big, big scale things. And, and it's, and you would love to have original art, but sometimes it's hard to find that. So it's, that's a great tip for anybody out there listening to this, to put your artwork in front of interior designers, because they're always looking for it. Yeah, they're always looking for it. And, 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 and also just, you know, it sounds simple, but telling them I do custom work, you know, not everyone does commissions and and isn't open to doing things in whatever size someone needs and people usually need specific you know custom art they need certain sizes certain mm -hmm. colors to go with you know and so yeah so that definitely um helped tremendously and then i think that you know from working with the stores and um it, they're placing your you know interior stores or putting your art with their beautiful products and they're posting them you know, mm -hmm. on Instagram and things like that. And that's mm -hmm. making your art look even better, you right. know, and giving people ideas of like, oh, I like that lamp and that goes with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that helped tremendously. Um, yeah, that was a tip that Gina Julian had. Do you know Gina? She's yes, so yes. Sweet. Uh, she was lovely. I had her on this, the podcast and she was so brilliant. She asked her friends who were interior designers to take pictures of her artwork in their home. And I'm like, why? That's so simple. Genius. What a great yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exactly, you know, that's, I think that that's like a huge thing that's helped me a lot with, with, with my growth is that, you know, people don't always, well, not everyone, you know, has an interior designer do right. doing their home, you know, right, and right. they feel, you know, like, I don't know what goes with what, you know, and exactly. seeing examples of that, I think really helps sell your work to people because they get inspired by that photo or, you know, they get ideas th for themselves. Yeah. They can visualize it, what that could be for them. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mainly Instagram, are you doing any other social media platforms? Um, not, I mean, I do stuff on Facebook as well, but I, Instagram is definitely, um, I don't, I mean, it's, it's my favorite. I mean, maybe I, I'm, I enjoy doing it so much <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. why like I, I do it. But, um, that's been my main. Yeah. I like it know. too. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's a nice community for, yeah. Unfortunately it has changed. Yeah. It has a lot, but even with like the Instagram stories and all of that and how it's like, you know, like using that to help, you know, get your work out there as well. Um, it's changed a lot, but it's still, it's still a great platform. Mm -hmm. Do you use uh, Pinterest at all? You know, I used to, I really like, I, I used to be really, I don't know. I just kind of, I, I, know like, so many. I was overwhelmed by Pinterest. It was like, so it is Pinterest. overwhelmed. Yeah. And I feel like I get, I get stuck looking at things like cooking stuff and yeah, you know, all those different right? things. Yeah. And then I'm not, like, wait, what, what was I on here community. for? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what am I on here for? Oh, wait. Yeah. Five hours later, I'm like, I, exactly. have, I know what I'm going to cook for the rest of the year. Well, yeah, I'm good on that. But then, you know, yeah, what, exactly. What did I do this for? No. <laughs> Get it. Yeah, Get it. That, that's exactly. Yeah, I do like Pinterest a lot. I, I do think that it's a great um, thing to use as well. But uh, definitely Instagram has been you know, huge. And it's helped me meet so many people, you know, I mean, in, in real life, <laughs> um, you know, it's like meeting, meeting people online and the, you know, and then those become actual, you know, people that I work with. Yeah, so it's yeah. definitely, I think brought me the most business, um, that I, that I've done so far. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, it looks like you work in a couple different mediums cause you also do, uh, like those relief type of artwork mm -hmm. it's like just color white on white basically is what kind of a medium are you working in with that that that's a, actually a plaster oh, and then plaster. i like uh-huh yeah that's wow. been a new yeah that's been a new <laughs> new thing but it's been it's been really fun um I well, so I'm just walking down Home Depot. I'm like, I think I'll buy some plaster and make a painting. <laughs> like, where did that come from? Um, actually, that came from, I actually had a client of mine who was just wanting something more sculptural, but plain to go with her other artwork that like didn't take away from it, you know, was just really different. Mm -hmm. And she showed me a couple of things and, you know, I was like, oh, well, that's not me. You know, I'm not going to 
try to replicate that, you know, but I just, it just kind of sparked an idea and was like, um, well, you know, th- that's kind of fun. You know, that's something yeah. different. I, I like, I love a challenge. Like that's, you know, I feel like that's something that keeps me interested. There's always something new to learn with art. You <laughs> oh know, there's God, always something yeah. new to play with. There's always something new to, you know, and that's what makes it so fun to me. That's also the growing collection of supplies. <laughs> as right, well. right. It's like, oh, now I need plaster. It's like, you know, okay. Um, but no, that's, that's been, yeah, that's new. And I've loved doing that. That's been super different than any of my work. And it, it looks really amazing against like a really fun, like busy wallpaper, you know, behind it. Um, or since it's, you know, little monochromatic it looks really good against like a dark wall color and things like that so yeah i love anything with texture and then mm-hmm. when you take art and you make it textural that's really cool i i really yeah. like those are really pretty too and then you use um your other paintings are those oil and use some gold leaf maybe uh i go back and forth i love oil uh, um the smell is so strong yeah um and i'm really impatient sometimes with just like it takes so long to dry as you know mm-hmm. so that's uh i but i do I mainly usually work with acrylic and gold leaf um i will dabble with oil but it's it takes sometimes it takes six months to dry if it's really thick you know so so how do this the the pieces that you have that have some gold leaf in it they mm-hmm. look, they look thicker than a than acrylic yeah, they are acrylic, but yes, they're very heavy body. Do you use like um, a gesso to kind of build it up or? Uh, um, those, oh yeah, I do. Yeah, not a, a lot, but no, that's it's mostly just many, many layers of really heavy bodied paint. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh, they're I love it. <laughs> so how did you go? Like you have been, oh, tell me about HDTV. What was that all about? Oh, um. That was, um, like I said previously, about um, having my artwork in Charleston. There was a, um interior designer here in Raleigh, and she walked into that store, saw my artwork, and she was actually going to be one of the designers doing um, Love It or List It. And so she contacted me and asked me what work I had available if I would be open to using some for the show and of course I said yes to that what Um, a fun moment that's so cool yeah so that was pretty um interesting because she's a local Raleigh designer you know but she was in Charleston and saw my work there so it's great it's crazy how things you know turn out like that you just never know what's going to lead to what you know and um so yeah so I worked with them and I had a couple pieces on one of their episodes they're fantastic to work with and um, they they film locally and here in Raleigh so I've done several episodes of them with different artwork and everything and that was that was very exciting that's great that's a great show too I really I like that show it's one of the few shows I still watch on HGTV <laughs> it's like been it. on for ah. a long time yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a really fun show so that was really exciting. Um, so you are, you're in stores, but are you in any galleries? Yeah, I'm in one local gallery, um, Vita Vite, which um, they actually have two locations. And um, I've been working with them since they opened, which was, gosh, I think it's been three years ago. Did so, they yeah. approach you or did you approach them? Um, let me think back. Um, actually... I approached them, but it was kind of funny because the owner said that she had seen my work um, somewhere else and was going to contact me. So we kind of, it was kind of almost, I, I think I did the reaching out, but she had been familiar with my stuff and um, they, they've been um, wonderful to work with. It's been wonderful exposure and they have like two, almost 6,000 square foot spaces. So wow. Wow. I, it allows me to do my like favorite which is you know really large scale mm-hmm. work and to, it looks really great in there gosh you're so fortunate because it's hard for artists to get into galleries so i'm not i shouldn't say that but for some artists it can be hard to get into that's 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 really helpful to know but you feel like that the that it's been more of a pro than a con to be in the gallery because they've been working really great for you yeah, I think it's it's hard to find, you know, no one cares about your work as much as you do, you know, and I think it's really difficult to find people you trust and, you know, that also promote your work. And if you find the right fit, 
um, I think it can be wonderful. So for me, it, it, that, it's definitely been more of a pro. Um, and then, you know, that frees you up in a way where they can, you know, they'll, they can ship your work, you know, and they promote it. So it's freeing you up to have more time to create as well. Mm, yeah, that's true. So when you get to that kind of point in your career, that could be a really good thing. Yeah. So I always like to uh, wrap up the episodes with uh, the best advice that was ever given to you. And uh, so I'm asking you, what was the best advice ever given to you when you uh, were starting out your creative career as an artist? Um, I think not necessarily about being an artist was the best advice, but I applied it to that. <laughs> um, just is just no matter what, to really just put yourself out there and not worry as much what people think because sorry, let me start over on that. <laughs> sorry. Well, um, let me ask, let me ask you the question. Okay. So, so let me ask you a question. What would be your best advice for, um, that was ever given to you actually the best advice that was ever given to you. And then we'll, I'll ask you something else after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, best advice that was ever given to me was to really just whatever you're wanting to do to go for it and to not overthink it because we have one life and that's, you know, there's no redos <laughs> and you mm -hmm. just, um, you don't get any second chance. Like you have nothing to lose, you know, and, um, to really just go for whatever it is that you want really badly. Mm -hmm. And I definitely applied that to, to my artwork. So when you were, when you made that leap and you were like, I'm going to do this as full time, did mm -hmm. you have, a, have like a number in mind? Like I need to hit this, this amount of money. I need to make this amount of money to actually sustain this as a full time career. Or was it just like, I'm leaping and I'm going and I just know it's going to work out. Uh, no, I wish it was that. Yeah, no, I definitely, <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely, you know, sat down and, and figure out, you know, I've got to make this amount to, you know, cover my bills and all these things um, beforehand and then really waited until I got to that point to, to really go for that because uh, it, it puts a whole nother pressure on yourself um, and stress on yourself to do it full time. And, you know, you have to make this amount of money. If you're not there, then I feel like creatively that's not good for you either. Mm, that's a good point. I do think if you're, you're really doing something that you're just so passionate about and that you love, that energy is so contagious that it will be successful as mm -hmm. one part, but you do need to do the little number crunching as well. And then revisit that even over time and like, okay, where am I at for this year? And what are we going to do this year? Yeah. So if you were going to give advice to your young high school self that came out of oh high boy. school, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what you were going to do. What would your advice be to that person there? Um, well, as far as, sorry, can you re ask me that again? I'm sorry. As, as far as like art wise or as far as, um, just in general, as far just as in general, just in general, what would you, what would be your advice that you would give to you, your younger self? I think is to just expect like the ups and downs. And I feel like we're always looking for this like big moment where you've like made it mm. <laughs> or this big break where you've made it, you know, and like, once this happens, then this, this is it. I've, I've, I've arrived. And I'm successful now. And, um, I think that it would just be telling myself that it takes a really long time and it's like the unsexy answer, you know, but it's like to be consistent and to work really hard and that there's no one way to do it. <laughs> so you uh -huh. just got to try, try everything that you possibly can. Um, yeah, there's no one way, you know, right. we, you, you, you make your own way, you figure it out as you go. Right. And you never know what's going to resonate with people just like the exercise that turned into these now very right. popular paintings. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, just stay true to that, that journey. It's a journey. Yeah. 
Right. And, and people, you know, just for an example, like, you know, being on, on T having my work on TV, um, you know, so many people said to me like, Oh my gosh, you know, that that's, that's huge. You know? And I was like, yeah, but it, you know, the reality is yes, that was very exciting, but the reality was I didn't make any sales from that. Like that, yeah, that big, yeah. yeah. And so that's <laughs> the thing. It's like, it's this big, like, Oh, your work's on TV. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's great. But the truth is that didn't bring me any sales that didn't like catapult my career, you know? So it's just like, I think there's just so many, you, you get one, one, one accomplishment and then, you know, you kind of plateau and then the next one, and then you, you just, it, it's all uh, ups and downs, but then that's okay. You know, like and that's what makes you keep working hard, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. That's so funny that you say that. I had um, my stuff on the Today Show, and I was like, "Oh my oh, gosh, so this is going to be crazy! It's going to sell a bunch of product." I didn't sell yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's like it's like ex I had the exact same experience, and it's it's so funny that you say that. But it does go to credibility that, and it does make you feel like, okay, these are this is you know HGTV. They're like right, of course, that, and they see that my work is valuable and that. It, it should be on their show. I mean, that's a lot of credibility. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's, yeah. it's, it's a huge thing. It's, it's very, you know, you feel very validated. You feel very like <laughs> excited, but it's yeah. definitely, you know, I think we always show, you know, a lot of our highlight reels, you know, on social media and things like that. But I think it's really good to be honest and say, you know, what has been really successful, what hasn't as far as you growing and as far as you know selling art because sure. um, certain things look so exciting and so big but in reality you know maybe it's that local show that you did you know and that's where you you know met uh, you know a lot of people and and really started connecting with people and that's where you started selling more of your work than having your stuff on tv you know so I, I think that's really important and I keep hearing that over and over again from um, different artists that actually getting out there physically and having a show and interacting with people in your area is, is a really good idea because that's how you get those uh, connections to people that actually want to purchase because now they know you too. And so they, you know, people buy the person behind the brand and so they kind of personally met you they could say oh i know this artist i met them in person and you know Absolutely. i love their work and mm -hmm. yeah this is what inspired them when they were working on this piece and i'm so happy i have it in my home so yeah i do have one other question this is where i went yeah. earlier when we were talking about galleries um when you you work in a collection um like i know you did your small your minis for mm -hmm. and, and then we, do you are you showing that process on on your social media or do you wait until you have a whole collection completed and then show it um no i just kind of show as i go really i i i don't that's something i'm kind of working on right now is trying to get together more of a large body of work and then having like almost like a release of that yeah um because i do see a lot of artists doing that it's something that i haven't tried um to do and i definitely think but i haven't haven't done that so far but i definitely am wanting to try that and see how that goes and i think that that's you know everything you just <laughs> i think as an artist you just try everything you right. know, see what works for you you know and it's i think it's a little hard because it's like social media is like pressure post something every day every day every day it's like well I, this painting is going to take me six months people <laughs> <laughs> well, ex yeah, we live in such a fast pace. You feel like, well, I, that's been a big thing that I've been working on personally is to really be careful, like how much I'm consuming on on social media right, because right. you know you it's sometimes some people work really quickly, some people don't. You know, some people post things constantly, and you can kind of get in this like circle where you're just like, am I doing enough? Am I producing enough? You know, and it, it puts this extra pressure on you. That's mm -hmm you know, the, the, if that's not how you work, that's fine. You know, yeah. you don't have to be posting something 10 times a day, you know, and, and, and real, realistically, you know, doing, and I, I do a lot of stuff on social media, but that takes time away from actually creating. Right. So, you know, that's something I've been trying to really keep in mind is, you know, get off the phone, get back to the painting, you know, right. like if you're not, if you're not making it, there's nothing to show, you know, you've got to stay in your own lane and, 
work. You got to do what you got to do. So I think that's important. That's helpful. To, yeah. I mean, when I, when, when I do little watercolors, they don't take that long, but working on a big acrylic painting, it's just, they take forever. You know, they take a long time. So I'm always on that, that, that teetering on that. Should I just do something quick to post and then go work or mm-hmm. should I just work and just, you know, show it later when it's all done. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a hard thing for people to realize too, is that, you know, not only are you creating artwork, you're also the photographer, you know, doing your own photography. You're also doing the social media. You're also, you know, doing your own branding and your logos. And there's so much that goes into it, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that balancing act is something that people don't really realize. Mm-hmm. You're like a one woman show, you know, <laughs> no one else is, is doing all that for you. Well, I mean, I guess, when you get to a certain point, but I know I'm doing it all myself right now. And I think that's true with most artists that I've spoken with. And they, yeah, it, it seems like they have this big team, but they're just actually multitasking very, very efficiently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a lot. Well, this is just really lovely. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We, uh, I mean, we talked about so many great things today. I really appreciate it. I didn't even get to talk about your adorable, bang- are they Bengal kitties? Yes, they're bangles. Oh, <laughs> Got one with me right now, actually. I just yep. have, I have little boring rescue tabbies. They're not oh, fancy. No. <laughs> but no, I, my- I never even saw a bangle cat until I saw your cats. Oh, I was really? Like, what well, is that? <laughs> my husband has severe allergies, and so if, um, the bangles are hypoallergenic, and that's really? why. Really? Yeah, we've always, I've always had rescue animals, and um, yeah, he's highly allergic to dog and cat hair. So I didn't know that. Um, yeah, Bengals, Siamese cats, and um, there's a couple other breeds that are hypoallergenic. So it was that or nothing. So I said, well, I've got to have a cat. So <laughs> I just, it just seems like all artists, we all seem to have cats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love dogs too, but. Oh, um, yeah, me too. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jennifer. This is Thank you great. so much for having me. It was wonderful being here and, and wonderful speaking with you. Yay. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on patreon.com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, mariropeson.bigcartel. And you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. It's just a wonderful thing and I would really deeply appreciate your support.